This is something I've been wanting to add to the shop for quite some time. You just watched it heat a piece of inch and a half round mild steel in under two minutes. This is an induction forge. It's a 15 kW induction forge. This one I bought from US Solids. There are a lot of very similar ones out there. Matter of fact, I think they're probably all the same. They just have different branding on the outside, but they all look like they are identical otherwise. And this particular unit runs on 220 volts and draws just under 30 amps. So it's something that is within the reach of most small blacksmith shops. You can get bigger units running off of three phase 440, but I don't have that and I don't think I ever will. So I was really glad to find one that I can try out in a small shop. Now I've had this unit in the shop for a little while, but it's taken me time to get all the components. It just comes as the induction heater, includes this one coil. You can make as many different coils and different sizes and shapes as you need to, but it doesn't come with a cooler. It doesn't come wired up, so you gotta get appropriate wiring and you gotta make sure you got an appropriate circuit and breaker in your shop to run the thing. And you have to have a cooler. I'm using a 10 liter TIG torch cooler and that seems to work okay, but I think it's right at the lower end of what you can get away with. A bigger TIG cooler would be good. And some people just run a garden hose in the back with another garden hose running out the backside to drain out on the ground in their yard. But I don't have that kind of water available. And here at Black Bear Forge, the shop can get well below freezing. So I wanted something I could run an antifreeze solution through. And that's antifreeze that is specifically formulated for welding equipment. Most of the noise you hear is from the cooler, which I'll turn on here. That's just a pump that circulates the antifreeze solution. It's got a radiator and a fan, and it's the fan that you're really listening to. And then this coil is refrigeration tubing, and the coolant runs through here and around the coil, and that keeps you from melting the copper coil while you're heating. And these can be quickly and easily swapped out. I have not made any other coils yet, but I will because the size of the coil is really pretty important. It has controls on front that set the heating temperature and a hold temperature if you're using it on a timer it will hold. Mostly I'm using a foot switch with it so I just hold down the foot switch and it just heats while you've got the foot switch down. And you can set the timer up here for heating time, retaining time, and cooling time and this is the heat temperature corresponds to the heat time and then of course the retaining temperature corresponds to the retaining time and cooling time is just with it off. I'm not sure what happens when it hits the end of that unless you have it set to start all over again. And you can turn that on and off here, but I've got it on manual because that's the way I'll use it most of the time. And a few other indicator lights and of course lights that tell you if it's heating, retaining or cooling over here. This tells you what the current is that it's currently running at the coil and this is a timer. It'll go up to 99 seconds, then it just starts over at zero if you're still running it at that point. So remember our little uh, candle holder project from last week, Dan Moss Challenge? This is another blank for that. I'm just gonna put that in there. Now this is a lot looser fit in the coil than that inch and a half bar, so it will actually take longer to heat. or relatively compared to a coil just made for this size material. But this is a lot faster than what I got in the coal forge because I had to wait for the coal fire to come back up to heat. And you can also make coils that are longer in this direction. Like any forge, the longer you leave this in, the hotter it's going to get. So that's 60 seconds of heating right there. a piece of 5 16 round bar. It probably won't heat as hot, although it's doing better than I thought it would. 
My understanding is if the bar is too small, it just won't get very hot, but that's, that's a low forging heat there. It seems like it's stalling out. It may not get any hotter than that. And if you run it in and out, you can get a much longer heat if you need it. That's as hot as that's going to get because the coil is too big for this bar. So you wouldn't be able to get to welding temperature with this setup. And here's a one inch bar. You know, on a gas forge, by the time it's this hot, I wouldn't be able to hold it this close. It would be way too hot back here. So this is a very controlled heat and can be very precise for what you want. Which means you don't need tongs quite as much, because it's an advantage. This is getting hotter than the 5 16 bar did because it fits the coil better. I'm going to see if I can get this to come all the way up to a sparking heat here. It should be a little hotter than welding heat. Right there is probably welding heat. And you see that outside the end of the coil there. And you can see a few sparks starting to come off of it. So that's a little hotter than welding. And you can see it started to burn that a little bit. So not only will this thing reach a good forging temperature quite quickly, it also gets hot enough to forge weld. One advantage of it here in the shop, at least in the summer, will be that it puts no heat into the shop by itself, or not any that you're going to notice, not at all like a gas forge or like a coal forge. That's a disadvantage in the winter because it's only about 28 degrees in here right now and it's kind of cold today and I kind of wish I had the gas forge going, but I couldn't resist trying this out and seeing if it would work. And it does work. We're going to see this in some more videos. I'm going to save doing a full pros and cons sort of a video on it till after I've had more time to work with it, see if it does the things I want, make some more coils, maybe we'll do some videos on how to make coils for it. Like I say, I'm not being sponsored by U.S. Solids or any of this other equipment. I paid full price for everything and I'm just trying to figure this out. But this is something I have been intrigued by for quite some time, so I'm really glad to be able to give it a try here in the shop. I'd kind of been waiting to find out, could you forge weld in them, could you not forge weld in them, were they really practical? And when I noticed Clay Spencer was starting to use an induction forge, I knew it was starting to be a realistic thing because I really trust Clay's opinion as a blacksmith. Then I also found out some of the local guys were starting to look into these. Somebody had one, did a Zoom demo, our current pandemic Rocky Mountain Smiths meetings are all by Zoom, they're online. And somebody had one of these that he was demonstrating and I was really impressed. He was showing how to make coils, he was showing how he could heat different things, and he said he had done some forge welding in it. Also provided some links, which I will provide up here to Edge of the Anvil, that's EJ of the Anvil. 
And he's got some videos showing him forge welding in there. So I'll link to his channel up here or maybe one or two videos, something like that. And once I knew you could forge weld and he was forge welding in an open C shape, or he called it a taco coil, so you could bring pieces out without having to pass it all the way through the coil, I knew this had applications for the kind of things I want to do in the shop. One of the biggest things I use the coal forge for is those smaller, more delicate forge welds. And this will be able to do that. So it's just another tool. I'm not going to get rid of the coal forge, not going to get rid of the gas forge. This just provides another set of options. It has the advantage of you don't have to build a fire, you don't have to worry about putting a fire out. If you just need to heat one thing today, you just turn this on and you get it hot. But I still need to work with it to find all the pros and cons and to make sure that it really does what I want it to do. Somebody out there right now is saying, whatever happened to the ribbon burner forge though? I thought you were going to do that. Yes, someday I'm going to do the ribbon burner forge. It hasn't been a high priority. It's something I'm going to have to set a week, two weeks aside to build and mess with and get it all right because I just know it's not going to be one of those things I just come up here and whip together. And other than having to assemble all the components, the components themselves were pretty much plug and play on this. So this took a lot less time than the ribbon burner. Plus the ribbon burner forge will just be another propane forge and I have a good propane forge that I'm happy with. So it's just not a high priority. Still plan to do it, still hope to get it done. Maybe this summer we'll do that. There are just other things that have been more important, like trying to keep regular videos going out every week. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this introduction to induction forging. I'll say that three times fast. And we're going to take a closer look at this. We're going to use it in some of the videos. You may not even be aware of using it in some of the videos because it may be off screen, but it is going to get used and I will try to point out when we're using it so you know exactly which forge I'm using in which project. In the meantime, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop. Stay safe, stay warm, wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next one.